I want to thank you for uh, having me here today. It's uh, an absolute pleasure, a uh, great honor uh, to be here. Um, this is my uh, first time here in, uh, in China. I'm uh, definitely enjoying myself. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit today about some of the things that we've been working on in uh, the jQuery project. Some of the things that we've uh, released recently and some of the things that we're hoping to work on here in the upcoming uh, months. I wanted to talk a little bit now about where uh, jQuery is uh, as a project. Uh, we've seen some uh, really uh, phenomenal growth uh, over the uh, past couple of years. Uh, right now, jQuery is used in about 40% of all websites, uh, which is uh, rather cool. Um, so we're, and we're continuing to grow uh, every single month. Uh, additionally, this here is the uh, traffic that comes to the jQuery website, and uh, we're we're continuing to uh, grow year over year. We've almost doubled, uh, or sorry, we've more than doubled. We've almost tripled our traffic over last year. So it's obvious that there still continues to be a lot of interest uh, in jQuery. Uh, recently, uh, we released a jQuery one four three and one four four. Um, along with some plugins and jQuery Mobile. I'm hoping to talk about uh, all of those today. Uh, uh, jQuery 143, we just released uh, about a month ago now. We released it at the, the jQuery conference in Boston. And we worked on a number of different features to try uh, and improve the internals of jQuery. One of the things that we, we worked on in particular was making sure that jQuery passes uh, what's called a, a JS lint. And a, a JS lint uh, is, is, a, is a tool written by Douglas Crockford that allows you to uh, validate your JavaScript code. Um, it has some uh, validation in it, so making sure that you're not writing uh, improper JavaScript, but it also has some checks that uh, help you to write just good quality code. Um, so this is, uh, this is important for us since we have a lot of contributors to jQuery. We want to make sure that the code quality is consistent. Um, so as we're working here and we're, we're using a tool like JSLint, we're also writing up uh, style guidelines for people to follow. Uh, so that way, if you want to write a code that looks like uh, uh, the code in jQuery, you can follow those. Uh, we have all this integrated, and uh, it's all integrated into a single uh, command in our build process now, so that anyone who is contributing can just run the, our, our make lint command, and it'll verify uh, the code base. Um, uh, another thing that we've been working on is, uh, is modularity, breaking down uh, jQuery into smaller pieces of code. Uh, so that they could possibly be loaded uh, individually. We still try to make sure that jQuery is as small as possible and, uh, and that it doesn't have too many features. But at the same time, we like to make sure that the dependencies uh, from one uh, piece of jQuery to another are reduced. Um, so this is one of the nice things about doing this, though, is that it's allowed us to make sure that jQuery um, when we run the test suite, it doesn't, we don't have to rebuild jQuery every single time. and allows us to develop much faster as a result. One of the big pieces of jQuery that got changed in jQuery 143 was the CSS module. This, is, this module is responsible for all the different uh, uh, CSS related things that happen in jQuery. So this is uh, this rewrite that we did. Uh, we wanted to make sure uh, that the module became much more extensible, so that people could write plugins that could extend what happens in jQuery and add in new whole new CSS features. Uh, when we did this, it, uh, we also got a, a bit of performance as well, which is uh, really quite cool. Um, so just to kind of show you, this is some of the code that's in jQuery now. Um, it might be uh, kind of hard to read, but the important part 
is that you can now, uh, there's now this thing called uh, uh, CSS hooks, where you can snap in new pieces of functionality that take care of specific CSS properties. So that way, you can also you can implement features that'll make uh, different CSS3 properties work across all browsers. Um, one thing, let's see if we can pull it up here. Um, one of the jQuery contributors, um, he wrote uh, some CSS hooks. Um, I'll see if I can find them because they, they are uh, really quite cool. Uh, he created a GitHub account and put them all up uh, inside. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, there we go. He's been contributing uh, with a number of other uh, uh, jQuery uh, users, and it's resulted in a whole bunch of plugins now that build off of this new feature in jQuery 1.4.3. So, for example, we now have uh, plugins uh, for, for doing uh, border image, uh, border radius, uh, box shadow, uh, managing all sorts of color properties, um, you know, uh, doing transforms, doing rotations, all these things. And then the important thing, though, is that with these plugins, it makes sure that all these different CSS3 uh, properties work in all browsers. So they will work in... Firefox, they'll work in Safari, they'll work in, work in Internet Explorer, and, uh, and so we can guarantee that they're just going to work everywhere. So I mentioned that we got faster as well. Uh, during this rewrite, we got about 15% uh, faster uh, in, the, in the CSS module, which is obviously something that we, uh, we always appreciate. Another thing that we did a lot of work on was making sure that uh, when you're searching for elements in a page, uh, that it's always going to be as fast as possible. And so in 143, we ended up getting a lot, lot faster. Uh, one of the things that we did here is we used this new method provided by, um, uh, provided by browsers called matches selector. It allows us to give it a, a CSS selector and determine if uh, a single element matches uh, that CSS selector. Now, this is something that we use in a lot of places in jQuery. We use it for closest, we use it for filter, uh, and a lot of different methods. Now, the reason why uh, uh, we're only just getting faster now is because this method didn't exist uh, about a year ago. So the, the problem was is that we we're constantly hitting this problem. We wanted to be able to get faster, um, and we weren't able to. The browsers didn't provide this for us. So what we did was is we wrote a, a test suite of that for this method that we wanted, and we went to all the different browser vendors. We went to uh, Mozilla. We talked with the WebKit guys. We talked with the Internet. We talked with Internet Explorer, and they all landed this new method. Um, so now that that's in, we're able to use it, and we're able to get much, much faster as a result. Uh, we're also able to improve the performance of uh, our find method. Uh, we, we've been uh, performing this for uh, improving this for a while, but this was um, this is due to the new selectors API specification that was created by uh, the W3C. This specification uh, gives the ability to um, pass in CSS selectors and find elements in a page. This is something that we use absolutely everywhere in jQuery. And I'm sure you do as well. So this is something that is um, that'll make all applications faster as a result. One thing that we started to do is we started to embrace more of uh, HTML5, starting to use the features that are provided to increase uh, um, the usability of jQuery as a whole. So, for example. Uh, there's this new thing in HTML5 called data attributes. Data attributes um, allow you to put attributes on elements that are prefixed with this data dash. Uh, when you do that, uh, they will all be allowed to go, they will allow uh, the validator 
to handle those in a way that won't throw errors. This is really nice because then you can have all sorts of attributes in your page that you can use for anything. There, there's no restriction on it anymore. So, uh, for example here, we have one called data-role. Uh, this is actually from uh, jQuery Mobile. We use uh, a, the, the new data role uh, attribute in a lot of places in jQuery Mobile. But the nice thing here is that in jQuery 143, we added some explicit support for them. So for example, you can see here where we have a, a, a div in the page with a data role, um, but when you use jQuery, uh, when you say dot data and you ask for the role, it gets it out. It, we've integrated it into our data API. So this is, we, we feel a nice and simple API for retrieving uh, uh, these attributes. One nice side effect is that we also handle uh, JavaScript uh, uh, objects correctly. So for example here, uh, we have an attribute named data hidden with a value of true. We're able to take that and when the value comes back out, we know to turn it into a Boolean true value rather than leaving it as a string. Uh, so this is something that, again, will make your code much, much simpler. We recently uh, uh, released jQuery 144. Um, I think it, it was just uh, last Friday that we released it. Uh, we again fixed uh, a, a number of bugs, and but we also added uh, two features. One was the new uh, fade toggle method. Uh, this goes along with our existing fade in and fade out methods. We just have a way to toggle it now. Uh, but we also have a way to do bulk data importing. So this goes along with uh, the data attribute stuff that I just mentioned. But it allows you to, if you have a bunch of data attributes on an element, you can just call dot data and bring them all in. So this is actually very, very useful because you can have all your settings uh, for a plugin right on an object, import them all in one operation, and then use them as a single object. This is uh, this has been very useful. <laughs>